So this is the second half of uh, 8.3. So I'm going to go ahead and forward through this stuff here and get to the slide that we left off at before. So a conference interval for a, uh, for a population mean mu, okay, here's our formula. So it's x bar plus or minus. Remember our critical values are coming from the t table and then you got your standard error. So there's your point estimate, the value of x bar. Your critical value is coming from what? The t table, okay? So this value right here will be coming from the t table and it's not going to be, uh, you know, uh, 1.645. It's not gonna be um, 1.96, okay? And so on and so forth. It's gotta come from this t table with degrees of freedom of n minus one. And then here's your standard error. S divided by the square root of n. So, uh, <clears throat> to use this formula, just like anything else, you need conditions, right? You need to have assumptions and stuff like that. And so here, here are the conditions, is that in order to use this formula, the data has to be either uh, obtained from a random sample or an experiment, okay? Two, the data does not have extreme outliers. Now, probably the problems that we do are not gonna have extreme outliers, okay? And if it does, we will tell you, okay, but problem is, is that we don't know exactly how to handle that situation. And so technically, your data shouldn't have any extreme outliers, okay. In practice, we would actually look at a histogram or what have you, or, you know, a dot plot and see if there are extreme outliers or not, okay. Uh, we're pretty much going to assume that there is no extreme outliers in the problems that we're doing here, okay. And then three, uh, one of the big things is that basically we need the sampling distribution x bar to follow what? An approximately normal distribution. In other words, we need it to follow a t distribution, right? An approximately normal distribution, okay? And remember from chapter 7, uh, so remember in chapter 7, we had a couple of criteria that allowed, thing, that allowed the sampling distribution of x bar to be approximately normal, right? Either x had to be normal, or n had to be greater than or equal to 30. So if x is not normal, that means then the problem had to state that n had to be greater than or equal to 30, because then the central limit theorem has to apply. And if n is not greater than or equal to 30, that means we had to state in the problem that x is normal. It's gotta be one or the other. It can be both, but it's gotta be one or the other, okay? And so you kind of see that in the problem that we're gonna be doing here, okay? So here's our problem again. So maybe pause this, read this again, and what I want you to ask yourself are things like this. What is the sample? What is the sample size? What is the population? What is your degrees of freedom? What's X bar? What's S? Things like that, okay? Pause it, think about it, and come back to the video. Okay, so first things first. X, our daily mean screen time for five-year-olds, right? It's a quantitative variable. That's why we're working with means. Two. The sample, sample is what? 25 five, five year old American children. So n is equal to 25, that means our degrees of freedom must be what? 24. Your population, okay, so your population must be all five year old American children, why? Because if you looked at 25 five year old American children, that means all of them has to be your population. Just, you know, that's why we learned that stuff back in chapter, chapter one and chapter two. Sample mean, I think we've already established that that's 182, okay? What about this 28? So this value right here says with a standard deviation of 28, okay, would that be sigma or is that S? Think about it, okay? Think about it, is it, is it the population standard deviation or is this the sample standard deviation? Well, let's read. It says here the daily mean screen time for 25 children is what, 182, this 182 minutes with a standard deviation of 28. So, this standard deviation is coming from what? A sample. So it's the sample standard deviation. So hopefully you said that S is 28 minutes, okay? And last thing is that we're gonna need our, is our critical value, okay? So uh, hopefully you printed out that T table, okay? And you have it in front of you. And uh, what I think we're gonna find is that the critical value for this particular problem is 100, is 1.711. So remember, we're creating a 90% confidence interval, okay? And our degrees of freedom is 24, okay? So I did a screenshot of our t-table, okay? Here's our t-table. So here's 90% confidence 
confidence level. Remember, these are the value. This is the values of the T. This is the critical values. Here's the degrees of freedom of 24. Okay, so our sample size is 25. Our degrees of freedom is 24, and that means our critical value must have been 1.711. You're not using 1.645 here. That's only for the critical value for Z, for a population proportion P. Here, it's for mu, and it's coming from the T table, okay? So now, let's work through all the problems. Remember the, the, the steps. The steps is that you have to verify conditions, okay? So we'll verify the conditions, we'll work out the math, and then we'll uh, do the interpretation. So, verify conditions, so one, Need a random sample, right? So let's go back to the problem. So it says here that the, the 25 five year olds were randomly sampled. So we got that one. So check mark. Okay. Two, problem didn't, many, didn't mention anything about extreme outliers. So we got that one. And then three, uh, problem stated that X daily screen time for five year olds is normal. That means that the sampling distribution of x-bar is approximately normal. It's, a, it's what? A t-distribution, right? So where did it state that? Let's go back. Last sentence. Assume that the daily screen time for five-year-olds is normal. Okay? And so there you go. Um, so we have all the conditions. So we have this one. And if we have all these conditions, we can use the formula that I gave you. So here's the formula. Okay? And... I think we already wrote this stuff down. We already talked about it. X bar turned out to be 182. Okay. Our critical value from our T table, remember, it has to come from the T table, right? Turned out to be 1.711. And then there's our standard error. Okay. So if, the, if Web Assign says go calculate standard error, you would, you would go ahead and calculate S divided by the square root of n, put that in the calculator. And it turned out to be what? 5.6. 5.6. Now, if, if the standard error doesn't terminate nicely, then a lot of times it won't. Leave all your values in your calculator, okay? And then multiply it by your critical value of 1.711, okay? Or, or whatever your critical value is, okay? Does anybody remember what this number is? So when you take your critical value, multiply it by your standard error, you get what? The margin of error, margin of error. So what do we do? We take our point estimate of 182, subtract off the margin of error. We take our point estimate, add the margin of error to get our confidence interval. So there's our confidence interval. And what do we think is located in there? What do we think is located between 172.42 and 191.58? It's mu. It's mu, the population mean. However, it was being defined in the problem, okay? So the calculation actually is kind of straightforward, all right? The last step is always what? To do the interpretation, to do the uh, inference here, okay? So interpretation of the confidence interval. So here we're going to start off what? We're 90% confident, right? That mu, which is being defined as what? The daily mean screen time for all five-year-old Americans. And a lot of times, remember, that parameter is stated right in the problem. And if you go to the problem, it will be stated. You'll see it, okay? Is what? Is between... The two values that we found, here's the lower bound, here's the upper bound of the confidence interval. And it was all in terms of what? Minutes, okay? So hopefully, uh, you'll see that doing the confidence interval for mu is fairly straightforward. It's just that you have to remember that the critical value is coming from where? The T table, and you need degrees of freedom and the specific level of confidence, and you can look it up, plug it in, and you're off and running, okay? Hopefully that will uh, help you get through the material for section 8.3. Thank you.